If you want to establish linear independence in some general vector space, you can use coordinate vectors. If you want to know whether a vector is a linear combination of some other vectors in some general vector space, you can use coordinate vectors. And that is nice, of course, because that means that we can apply the technique we learned already for vectors in Rn, row reduction, etc. But why can we use coordinate vectors? That is what you will learn in this video. Essential part are the two properties which are listed over here. Uh, that is that the coordinate vector of u plus v equals the coordinate vector of u plus the coordinate vector of v. So you can take the plus sign out and that the coordinate vector of c times u equals c times the coordinate vector of u. So you can take scalars out. But why is this true? Well, suppose we have some basis b, b consisting of b1 up till bn. Well, just try it out what it means. That means that we have a u and a v. u can be expressed in terms of b1 up till bn, and v can also be expressed in b1 up till bn. In general, they will have different weights, of course. So u equals c1, b1 up till cn, bn, and v equals d1, b1 plus d2, b2 up till dn, bn. So then we know the coordinate vector of u with respect to b contains c1 up to cn, and we know the coordinate vector of v with respect to uh, b contains d1 up to dn. So what happens now if we add u and v, and if we multiply them with a scalar? Well, if we add up u and v, we get as our first term c1 b1 plus d1 b1 equals c1 plus d1 times b1 and so on and so on, and our last term, cnbn plus dnbn, will be cn plus dn times bn. It's over there. Uh, and uh, what happens if we multiply with a scalar? Well, uh, if we multiply, for example, u with a scalar, we get c times c1 times b1 as a first term, plus c times c2 times b2, plus c times up, up to the last one, plus c times cn times bn, that's over there. And then we can read off the coordinate vectors. The uh, first component of u plus v equals c1 plus d1 over here, etc., etc., up to cn plus bn. And the first component of c times u equals c times c1, etc., etc., up to c times cn. And then we see that ub plus vb equals u plus v uh, uh, in the basis b. And that if you multiply this u b by scalar c, you exactly get c u in the basis b. So those properties are indeed fine. And how can we use that? Well, for example, if you look at linear independence. So what's the consequence of this? Suppose you look at the equation c1 u1, c2 u2 up to c1, uh, c and e, uh, u and equals zero. So this equation over here. Then you take the coordinate vector on the left and the right step over here. So you take the coordinate vector b here and b over there. Well, what happens? The coordinate vector of a zero vector is just a zero vector, but now in uh, Rn. And we have this linearity. You can uh, uh, split up the sum in part and take the scalars in front. So we get this equation over here. But what, what does this mean? Well, if my first equation over here only has the trivial solution, that means my v1 up to vn are independent, then the last uh, equation also has the same solution, also only has a, tri a trivial solution, so the coordinate vectors are linear independent. So the uh, vectors uh, u1 up to un are independent, even if its coordinate vectors are linear independent. And you can do the same trick for span linear combinations. So instead, of computing with the original vectors you want until the end, which be, can be awkward, you can use the coordinate vectors to use uh, to do the computations and to establish things like independence. And that's the nice part of our coordinate vectors.